Getting all cosy here next to Jack from Bombay Bicycle Club. Hello. Hello. I'm. Uh, where am I? This is our sort of home studio. Uh, this is where we recorded a lot of the last record, and um, it's just a place where I do all my writing. I love it. We've got some dark red velvet curtains. It's very moody in here. Lovely, lovely old piano. Yeah. It's, t- it's uh, taken me a while to get it to get a, a vibe. You said you recorded uh, some uh, some of the album here, and I love the title, So Long, See You Tomorrow. Um, melancholy, but possibly with a positive twist. I don't know. What are you thinking about that title? That's kind of the idea, and um, also just it's uh, going along with the theme of, of repetition and looping, which is on the album not only musically, musically but lyrically as well. Um, the idea of... of Sort of bad habits always carrying on, even though you're trying desperately to stop them. So, uh, so long, see you tomorrow. You'll be back again. Bad habits will re- return. It's the inevitability of, of them returning, yeah. Bad love, too, perhaps, I wonder. Exactly. I love my bicycle. I wonder if you gents do, too. I, I ride my bicycle everywhere across Tokyo. Um, why bicycle in the title? Do, do you love your bicycle? The, the name came from, uh, it's actually a curry house that's just down the road. Really? And we would... We were 15 years old, and we were driving through this area, going to our first ever gig. We still didn't have a name. And, you know, we were naive young teenagers, and we thought, oh, we'll just nick that name for now. And we'll play a couple gigs, and we'll have a good time, and then we'll probably go back to just having normal lives. And then nine years later, we're still sort of <laughs> explaining it. Do you like the name? Um, I don't think I don't think the name really means anything, but I do think that there's probably... It probably has created a an image of us in a lot of people's heads, um, you know, naming yourself after that kind of thing. But if 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 they're not going to listen to us because of that, then that's their problem, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think who. I'm just having a mental blank. But there, there's actually been a couple of artists I've interviewed who are like, oh, God, you know, we, we, we just thought the name was a bit of a joke for, you know, for a couple of weeks till we came up with a real one. They end up being lumped with it for the rest of their lives. So. Yeah, that's what happened with us. <laughs> The album feels fun to me, quite um, light. I don't mean light in a in a light way. I mean light as in very sort of fresh and happy. Do Do you think that's right? I think yeah. I, I I definitely agree with you, and I think it's due to the the writing process that I was doing, which, as opposed to previous albums where I'm kind of stuck in my in gloomy London, you know, looking out the the window and it's raining, and this was this was written all over the world and I was traveling a lot and I was in it was just a great time of my life so you can kind of hear that that sort of excitement and happiness in the songs I always ask songwriters is it easier to write a happy song or a sad song I definitely find it easier to write a sad song <laughs> um, but I didn't want to do that anymore for this for this record you're having a good time <laughs> yeah exactly you mentioned traveling and you I, I, you said to me earlier you love Tokyo it's easily my favorite city in the world and I've been going there for the last f- uh, five years. I try to get there, you know, once every year just to catch up with some friends I have there. I do a lot of record shopping oh. at, you know, places like uh, Disc Union in Shibuya and Disc Lanjaro and uh, a lot of old jazz records. Oh, yeah. There's a, I still think that Tokyo is the mecca for, for serious jazz fans in the world. Um, just the concerts they have there, the jazz ca- the jazz kisser, kisser 10. Um, and and the endless record shops. We are very very spoiled. I mean, it's why I've lived in Tokyo for twenty five years. It was really all about the music, the music I can access there, and and the live music I get to see too. So. Yeah, I mean, just the amount of places that put on really avant garde and forward thinking acts, um, and that's kind of a rare thing in this city. I think you know, it's um, yeah, it's it's just a, a really exciting place to go and discover new things. The great news is you'll be back there real soon for Fuji Rock Festival. Yeah, yeah, first time playing Fuji Rock. We've yeah. always wanted to do it. So, have you been there before? Never. I've every time I go to Japan, I always say, you know what? Maybe this year it's time to leave Tokyo and maybe see some of the other country. But I just never get bored. And I think you're going to love Fuji Rock. It's it's really one of my favorite experiences every year in Japan. I, I've I've gone to every Fuji Rock bar, the very first one, unfortunately, um, and luckily I now get to broadcast my radio shows live from Fuji Rock. So it's just such a fun weekend. Yeah, I can't wait. 
what I love about it too, you know, you've, you've got all the music, of course, and then and the stage is nothing like the scale of, of the British summer festivals, but you're up in the mountains, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful environment, so you're going to have fun. Excellent. Speaking of festivals, Glastonbury too. Yep, that's in a couple of weeks. Um, again, we've been going there since we were teenagers. and When we first played Glastonbury, I think we we had three shows, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but we'd been camping there since Wednesday. <laughs> it's just in a tent and just sort of pretending that we weren't playing we were just kind of going as punters but we had to like we had to uh, some time of the day be like sorry guys we got to go play a show but we'll be back in an hour <laughs> you're gonna do that this year <laughs> we're kind of a bit more sensible these days uh, sensible yeah do you do you love festivals not just going as a punter but do you love playing festivals i, I really enjoy playing festivals i haven't gone to a festival in a long time i feel like i find them quite overwhelming these days to be honest but um it's it's Especially f the festivals we've done this year with this new record, it's really, I think we have made a summer record and it's really suited these big stages at festivals, you know, sun's out and everyone just really having a good time. That's what I was thinking when I was listening to the album, like I said, that happy, that happy feeling and I was like, oh, I can't wait to hear and see this at Fuji Rock. Well, it's, it's interesting because we released it in February, but we've just started to see a lot of comments on places like Twitter just saying... Now that the sun's out, I'm finally getting it. I'm, I'm, it's finally making sense to me, even though I've had it for a couple of months. Do you love performing live? Yeah, of course. I mean, what happens is you spend you spend a long time in the studio and you're just dying to play live. And then you spend a long time on tour and you're just dying to go back into the studio. So you're always, you know, the the right now we're kind of, we've just started playing festivals and it's really exciting. We've been waiting for it for a long time. It's very interesting for me to be here in in your studio do you love this experience to tinkering away and making the music absolutely and for you know this is this has been the first time i've had my own space where it's it's soundproof and i can make music at any time of day which is really sort of a privilege i think because i always used to have to you know my roommates would be telling me to <laughs> just yeah. please stop uh, and just having this creative space where I could be out and, you know, three in the morning, you just suddenly want to make music. I just get a cab here and there we go. It's, it's really, really amazing. We're just off Edgware Road, but um, for anyone from Japan coming to, to London or the UK, and speaking of summertime, do you have a favourite thing to do in summertime here? My favourite thing to do is to go to Hampstead Heath, which is where I grew up, and um, there's a, a swimming pond there. It's a mixed pond. And I used to... When I was growing up, I used to go there every summer with my friends and just cool down. Nice. Still doing that? Uh, I'm going tomorrow, actually, oh. yeah. <laughs> it's freezing, but it, it really cleanses your soul. <laughs> and finally, um, any favorite British music, either artists that inspired you or something you're listening to now, anything at all? My favorite thing right now, which is, I guess it's, it's quite obvious and it's kind of blowing up right now, but Jungle, um, who just have sort of come along and have this very unique sound um, kind of like Jai Paul and those kind of producers and very sort of influenced by soul and it's just I feel like they're going to be the next band that inspires so many other bands who probably make inferior versions of them but you know once in a while those bands come around it was the Strokes and the Arctic Monkeys and Maybe Jungle, not to the same extent, but I just feel like that's that's going to be the new thing. Maybe as big as Bombay Bicycle Club. <laughs> well, we'll see. Jack, it's been an absolute pleasure and I can't wait to see you at uh, Fuji Rock. Thanks so much for, uh, for, for letting me hang out with you today. No worries. Thank you. Got the piano there that I just mentioned. And look at that poster of a legend. And uh, electronic... Five happening down there, and the gorgeous velvet curtains, and a drum kit. This is something I bought in Tokyo. It's a different names of Shinkansen. Oh, I just realised. Right. Oh, yeah. Wow. Which one do I recognise? Oh, look at the Fuji. I love this. Yeah. You do love Japan. Indeed. <laughs> and there's the drum kit and a guitar, and where we were just sitting. Jack, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>